So that's sort of basic packaging. So as we start talking about more advanced packages, how do we make those more complicated devices that I was talking about? We want to talk about something called wafer level packaging. So in wafer level packaging, you have your sort of a completed wafer. So here's your wafer with all of the chips on it. So again, copy, repeat, copy, repeat, copy, repeat. You have all of your devices on this one wafer. And instead of dicing it first, what we do is we make all of those interconnections first, and then we dice up the wafer. So this is called wafer level packaging, and it's a little bit more uh, sophisticated than sort of these wire bonds where you kind of do it one by one. But you, I'll, talk, I'll talk through sort of the process flow here, but you're gonna put all of your metal interconnects down first before you do the dicing. And this just helps us with throughput efficiency. And as we get to the more complicated devices and we need smaller interconnects that aren't like physical wires, uh, this becomes much more beneficial to us. Okay, so if we look at this same semiconductor process flow, but we wanna substitute out the traditional packaging for wafer level packaging, it will look something like this. So you'll still go through your whole front end of line process and have your processed wafer. But as I mentioned, you're not gonna dice it right away. Instead, you are gonna put all of your middle inter interconnects. And that is called your redistribution layer. And I'll go through each of these steps in a little bit more detail because this is a bulk of what Brewer Science is doing in the packaging space. So you have your redistribution layer, which is basically your metal contacts. Then you're gonna do wafer bumping. These are just solder balls that have been deposited on the wafer. Then you're gonna thin your wafer. Again, I'll talk about all of these in more details in the subsequent slides. And then you'll dice it at the end. So after you have diced it, you don't need to mount and wireframe it. It already has all of the interconnects it needs. It has solder balls, and you can actually just do a solder ball connection directly onto your motherboard. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the redistribution layer. Um, we call, call it RDL for short because <laughs> One thing packaging people like me love, it is acronyms. Um, and also it gets really exhausting to say redistribution layer many, many times in a row. So we'll call it the RDL. Um, so the RDL is just extra metal layers. And what it allows us to do is reroute the input and outputs. So if you have a chip, and again, remember these are getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and you have a series, these are actually your connects right here on the ends. So you have all of these metal pads on the ends, but you'll notice that they're really, really small because your transistors are really, really small. They're not particularly in convenient places. Uh, they're all sort of on top of each other and it would be really difficult to make the connects. So what we can do is actually run a series. So there's your metal pad. We can run a series of metal lines and just reroute those connections to wherever we want them to be for convenience and for space. So we can get a much higher density of interconnects um, on a chip by using a redistribution layer. Obviously much, much more than trying to wire bond all of these metal pads, because now we can use solder bumps. These are the process flows that we go through to do the RDL. So, you know, one of the things that I often get asked is, um, you know, you, you work in the semiconductor industry, but it's not really, you know, I'm not designing the chip, I'm not actually making the chip. What, where does chemistry go into the semiconductor industry? And you'll notice here, there's a whole lot of layers that go into just this one process step alone. So RDL itself requires photolithography, it requires uh, sputtering steps, uh, etching steps, all sorts of things go into the actual RDL. But if we kind of walk through this, so we have our, our incoming wafer and we have that landing pad. Um, oftentimes we'll, we need some types of dielectrics in order to insulate all of those interconnects. So we do a lot of spin on dielectrics patternable dielectrics. Those are things we're working on right now at Brewer Science. Um, and then you sputter your seed layer, which allows you, of course, to do um, your subsequent RDL plating. So you have your copper seed, you do your plating to build up that copper line. Again, resist is used over and over to redirect that line exactly where you want it to go. So you can open up the space in the wafer you want to put down your solder ball. And so when all is said and done, you have sort of your landing pad here and then you can drop your solder ball right where it is. So again, all we've done is rerouted from the landing pad on the left side, and now we want to make our interconnection on the right side, and that's what the RDL does. Now, this is a very simple depiction of RDL because it's sort of one layer of RDL, but as we get into these really complex devices, sometimes you can do as many as like five or six RDL steps in your buildup, um, which allows you to really distribute out 
where you're putting your interconnects. And in some cases, we even extend the interconnects outside of the actual chip itself onto that epoxy compound. And that allows us to really use maximum space on the chip and save that peripheral for our interconnects. So the next thing I want to talk about is wafer thinning. Um, wafer thinning is a pretty significant amount of what we do in my group. Oh, sorry, I just touched the mic. Uh, it's a significant amount of what we do in my group. Um, the reason is, again, as we're trying to make all of these devices smaller, right? I mean, computing power on your wrist, uh, one of the benefits is to actually thin down your substrates as thin as possible so that you don't have any wasted space. Because if you think about a 750 micron thick wafer, that is about 700 microns of wasted space. So we can get rid of that and kind of grind it off of the backside of the wafer so that we have thinner and thinner chips. Um, we can then stack them. We can kind of fit more within the area that we want to um, work with. So if you kind of look at um, what I've put here, again, that silicon is just po polished off the back. And in the next slide, I'll show you kind of a video of what that looks like. Um, I mentioned here sort of standard silicon thickness wafers around 750 microns. Typical wafer thinning will go down to about 50 microns, uh, but there's lots of applications, including these 3D stacked applications where we're actually thinning well below 20 microns. In some cases down to five, that's pretty extreme. That's kind of what our ultimate goal would be. But you can see sort of here a demonstration of the space savings. So here you have one, two, three, four, five, six chips that are all stacked onto this landing die. And they're all connected, they're all full thickness, and they're all connected by these you know, quite large solder bumps. And in this case, what we've actually done is we've thinned down all of those chips. They're using different type of interconnection technology here. And so now you have the same amount of essentially uh, computing power, but in a fraction of the space. So this is really the power of the semiconductor packaging. Um, and I've shown here sort of a picture of what a thinned wafer looks like. Uh, so I'll get into why this is important, but basically as we thin the wafers, especially below that 50, they lose their structural integrity. They almost become like foils um, and they curve up like Pringle chips. So they look exactly like that as you start to thin them down. 